G'day guys. I want to talk to you about one of my favourite lures from this season. So, spoons are nothing new. I remember someone telling me about guys chucking raiders in Wyvernoe like over a decade ago and, um, and I've been using spoons or metals so to speak for probably maybe three years now but in the last 18 months I've been using a new one called the Palm Slowblat. So it's probably not a new lure but it's new for me on as far as bass fishing goes. So essentially it's designed for slow jigging which is pretty much what we do. So, so there's a couple of different ways I like to use it but they're all essentially the same. I, I intend on keeping it in the, in the zone with the fish. So if I'm fishing like an isolated point like this, I just like to do little, little hops with it, which is what I'm doing now. So the idea is to keep it as close to the bottom as possible. I like to run the 30 grams. Some people might think that's a bit heavy, but there's a couple of reasons for that. One, I can cast a lot further with a 30 gram lure than I can with a 20. And then the second is I like to keep it, I mean all lures we like to keep in the zone. So a 30 gram lure I can keep in the zone a lot easier. I don't have to think about it as much as I do with a 20. So if I'm targeting fish in 20 foot of water for example, it's easier to wind a little bit faster to stay above the bottom than it is to <laughs> Sorry, then it is to it, oh yeah. then it is to slow down and grab that fish. So the fish I'm targeting now, they're not massive. I just drove over this point and I saw them sitting there. So I thought I'd give them a go. So while I'm fighting the fish, I explain the rod. Here's a Dobbins Champion Extreme and I run a 743. It's a powerful rod so that I can get really long casts with that 30 gram lure. So the idea is always to keep the lure in the zone for as long as possible. So with a heavy lure like this one, I'm finding at the moment that the zone for the fish where they want to bite is on the bottom. So I flick it up a little bit, gives a couple of shakes, flutters back down, it's back on the bottom within a second or two. And within that short time frame and that quick descent, the fish have got to decide whether they want to eat it or not. They don't have time to watch it fall. They don't have time to, oh, they don't have time to think about what they want to do. They just, they grab it, as you can see. Again, nothing massive, but I knew they were small when I drove over them. The reason for the long rod, there's a couple of reasons. One, I can get really, really long casts to get to where the fish are. Secondly, when you're doing those high lifts and the fish grab you at the top, not that I'm doing them now, but when you do that high lift like that and the fish grab you at the top, I've only got to just, I've still got that bit of extra distance to go. Oh, that's better. So he grabbed that, just as I went lift off the bottom, he picked that up. I change my hooks, as I do with all the ones, I just like to play with stuff. I change them to Van Fook Twin Dancers. So it's still a, still a braided assist hook, but a lot finer, a lot finer hook point and a smaller gape. Very, very, very sticky. Probably my favourite part about the palm slow butt is the way it retrieves on a constant roll. So a normal lure will just flutter side to side, doesn't really have any erratic movements or anything like that. Whereas the palms, if I just slow roll it like that, it goes one, two, one, two, three, kicks out sideways, does all sorts of messy stuff, which I find gets the fish going sort of straight away. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I find this lure to be most successful when the fish are close to the bottom or hugging a ledge and I can change my retrieve rate just to keep that lure about one to two seconds off the bottom. It seems to be just enough that they, they can't resist having to have a little crack at it. And when you run those twin dancer assist hooks, they, um, they just never miss. They can't, there's no swapping or tapping at this lure, it's on. It's always hard to gauge the size of these fish because they're typically fouled up. 
little fishy. So I can cast that thing about 80 meters roughly, which means when I'm fishing flats, those sorts of things, I'm covering, covering a lot of water. The advantage to covering a lot of water is you're passing a lot of active fish. There's not always a lot of active fish in the one spot. So casting a long way, hopefully you go past two or three in a cast, get one of them to commit. <laughs> I've obviously grabbed this patch of fish up because now they're just going crazy. But as you can see, as soon as this thing kicks off the bottom, they just, they cannot resist. Not world beaters, but he'll keep as illegal. So for the whole combo guys, I pretty much run 10 pound straight through, I run 10 pound braid, 10 pound leader. It is a big lure and at times I do launch it pretty hard so I don't want to have to worry about leader snapping or braid snapping when I really launch into those casts. But the fish don't shy away from 10 pound when you're fishing a lure like this. <clears throat> They're too fixated on the lure itself to, to know what's going on with the, with the leader. For the reel, I like to run a smoke speed freak in the 30 size. So the reason I run the 30 is I want a bigger spool for longer casts. And the reason for the Speed Freak, because I find it easier, I fish this lure fast a lot. So I find it easier to slow down when I need to on the reel rather than work hard keeping it fast if it's a fast bite. But as you can see, they just love it. The fish have actually gone from the front hook to the back hook now which means either it's the dying light or they are starting to get sick of me. There you have it guys, palm slow blat. Um, not really a secret but I've been using it for 18 months and I've tried my best to keep it pretty quiet but it's um, definitely too effective a lure not to throw. See you all in the water.